Gentlemen, here two out of three falls count match there for the uh, Hughes Academy Championship. Cockery, a man who is uh, constantly challenging himself, constantly working on his uh, his game, and we've seen him evolve his game a lot over the last couple of uh, matches, resulting in a number of victories. Cockery, though. Very respectful competitor, but not a silly competitor, using that handshake to try and get one up on uh, Kokoru, but Frankie saw that one coming a mile away. Frankie, extremely well-versed competitor. I don't want... Oh. Extremely well-versed competitor, well-experienced competitor. Constantly fighting people bigger than her, not someone to take lightly. I mean, there's a very good reason that no one has been able to beat her for the Hughes Academy Championship. And before that, the Hughes Academy Women's Championship for four years before it was disestablished. And Frankie and Cockery there was some uh, back and forth offense. Frankie uh, seemed to get the uh, Frankie seemed to get the uh, the uh, better of all that offense, but Cockery shut that down straight away with a pa powerful back body drop. And these two people, these two uh, competitors have faced each other before. It was a very, very close match. Almost uh, Cockery winning the Hughes Academy Championship at that point. And Cockery has wrestled many matches and had several victories since then. So we could be seeing uh, an extremely close match with this one. I'm not sure anyone can pick who's going to win. But Frankie Quinn, as I said, is an absolute veteran of New Zealand wrestling. She is well versed in, in taking on competitors who are bigger than her, which Cockery most certainly is. And Cockery there, maintaining that chin lock with uh, Frankie Quinn. Oh, but Frankie Quinn with a beautiful jawbreaker. Oh, I think she might have been going for that tilt a wheel DDT she's known for. Tilt a wheel backbreaker and a massive claymore kick from Cockery. Cockery straight away with a pinfall. The winner of your first fall, Cockery! The first fall very quickly goes to Cockery. Cockery has clearly done a scouting of Frankie Quinn, has clearly uh, understood what a lot of her offense is, including that tilt to will DDT that he countered beautifully into the tilt, into the backbreaker. And Cock look at the eyes of Cockery. He is an intense young man at this point. He is sizing up Frankie, and Frankie's struggling to get to her feet. She is. And there we go, going in for the second fall. Oh my god, I thought Cockery was going to go for uh, 
Cockatoo was going to go for another of those big Claymore kicks in the corner. Frankie saw it coming, though. And Cockatoo landing straight on the back of his head. And that is, has stunned the big man, who looked like he was going to be coming out of the second fall on fire. Masterful strategy there from the veteran Frankie Quinn, using that uh, using that recovery time of Cockery to uh, recover herself. G again, going for that tilt to will DDT, but Cockery countering that at the last second, using his power to catch Frankie Quinn. I don't know if this is for a guillotine or oh my god, for a big suplex. And a suplex is a painful maneuver as it is, taking someone upside down so the blood rushes to their head and then slamming them. But when you're as small as Frankie Quinn against a guy who's six something, six foot something like Cockerty, he's a big, big man, that extra little bit of height really does some offense, really does some damage. Makes it a much more dangerous maneuver. And Cockerty there is, uh, knows he's jarred the back and the, neck, and the neck with that suplex. He's going straight for the hammer, for, straight for the, uh, straight for the, I don't want to call it the master lock, but full Nelson, that's what it's called, sorry. Going straight for the full Nelson. And it's such a rudimentary wrestling maneuver. But from a bigger man to a smaller man, or a smaller competitor, I should say, not man. From a bigger man to a smaller competitor, it forces the head forward, does a lot of damage to the back of the neck, and even makes it hard for you to breathe. And you can sort of see Frankie, she was fighting out of this hold at the beginning, but she is starting to fade. Keeping her arm raised so the referee knows that Frankie's in it, so we're not gonna see uh, her end on a technical submission. But Frankie is trying to power out of this move. Oh, and jumping up straight into an arm drag. Oh, and a beautiful arm drag as well. Frankie going straight to the speed game that she understands with a big wheel. Oh, and a wheelbarrow bulldog driving the face of Cockery straight into the mat. And I thought there we had uh, Cockery stunned, but kicking out at the last second at that two count. Oof. And that right hand from Frankie. I tell you what, she's a small competitor, but uh, she can hit damn hard when she wants to, and I think Cockery's jaw just felt it. Oh, if she was going maybe there for the sliced bread. Cockery again has done his scouting work, counted out of it. And Frankie almost going for an O'Connor roll. The second ball goes to Frankie Quinn. And after that modified bridging O'Connor roll, Frankie Quinn has now evens the contest at one fall apiece making this match now a sudden death. And Cockerty has got to be frustrated. He's, he has got to be frustrated. That first fall, he was explosive with his power. Frankie had him on the second fall, countering out of that explosive power. Oh, and a beautiful Japanese arm drag. Both of these competitors attacking each other as fast as they could, but Frankie a little bit faster. Two Japanese arm drags and Maybe going for that tilt world DDT again. But Cockerly, the power going for a massive bear hug. Shutting down that DDT. And maybe that was a little bit of desperation from Frankie Quinn there. Going for a move that Cockerly has counted out of twice now in this match. Might not have been the best strategy. And I don't know if that was desperation from Frankie that went, led her to go for that move. Or uh, she thought she could hit it. Oh, but there we go. She finishes the maneuver. DDT straight onto the top of Cockery's head. Maybe not quite with the power that she would normally hit that move with. And that bear hug will squeeze the breath out of you. So Frankie, at this point, really trying to get to get her breath back. Normally she'd be on the pinfall very quickly after a tilt wheel DDT. But she is gasping to get her breath back. But those right hand and chops Stunning cockery, but again, Frankie down to one knee. Might see Frankie in trouble at this point. We don't often see her uh, not able to follow up offense like this. She's clearly feeling her shoulder, something may be wrong with her shoulder or wrong with her, uh, her collarbone, but she is really struggling to get going against, uh, against cockery. Well, cockery again, 
really struggling after uh, a lot of the offense from Frankie Quinn. Oh, and a big cannonball from Frankie Quinn to the outside, taking down Cockerty. But Frankie is still clutching that right shoulder. Something clearly wrong with her, uh, her shoulder at this point. And Frankie not satisfied with a uh, not satisfied with a count out victory. Wants to get Cockerty back in the ring for a definitive win to the second fall. Again, the referee. It's a 20 count outside of the ring. So Frankie Quinn maybe wrestling vet veteran instincts at that point, trying to get Cockerty on out the nine count, but she had another 10 seconds that she could have dealt some offense to Cockerty. Checking out at the two count, Cockerty is still in this match. And still in it with power, driving Frankie into the corner, but Frankie's still in it. Going for another, oh, going for another Bulldog. I thought maybe we were gonna see Cockerty counter out of that, but Frankie, the momentum a little bit too much for his strength to carry. And Cockerty rolling out of that, rolling out of that Bulldog. I don't know if maybe the exhaustion and the injury to that shoulder and collarbone from Frankie Quinn stopped her getting a, a deep cover. But that could have been the end of the match. Going for sliced bread, number going for sliced bread, but Cockerty again countering out of that with snake eyes. Oh and Frankie Quinn countered out of that claymore kick with a genius running neck break. I have never seen someone counter out of that move like that. That running neck breaker is stunned. Cockery and again, sliced bread. The sliced bread bulldog taking down Cockery. Your winner of the match and still Hughes Academy champion, Frankie Quinn. And what a hard fall victory from Frankie Quinn. Cockerty had Frankie rocked on that first fall with that big Claymore kick and looked that he was uh, going to continue on that momentum. But Frankie Quinn managing to, uh, managing to get the victory again. Raising Cockerty's arms. What a hard fall victory. What the? I don't know what we're seeing. Horus. Horus hitting the ring. Are we seeing Frankie Quinn's next challenger? Cockery uh, clearly sensed maybe Horace was up to no good. Trying to get one over, take out Horace. And we're seeing Horace now call his shot. Are we seeing the next challenger now for Frankie Whoa! Quinn's championship? I didn't even know Horace was in the building. I haven't seen him for ages. But Frankie Quinn, not the one to, to back away from a challenge. It's looking like Horace is uh, laying down the challenge for the Hughes Academy Championship. And I think that was Frankie Quinn accepting the challenge. And this is a, uh, a more dangerous, dangerous looking Horace than I think we've seen before. Normally we see him smile a little bit in the ring, but that man looked all business. Still, regardless of the antics of Horus, we are seeing still Hughes Academy Champion, Frankie Quinn.